Fellow Ambazonians, good evening. It's a privilege uh, to be here once more for another broadcast, uh, another inspiring broadcast. I want to welcome all of you and especially those of you tuning in on Ground Zero. I have uh, very important announcements that I've come with tonight to uh, pass on to you. I also want to welcome those on the social media platform. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, once more, I come to you with uh, two very, very important announcements that uh, I would love to pass across to you. Uh, however, before I get there, I would like you, as usual, to uh, go ahead and invite those who may not know uh, I was coming live today. So please do me the favor and go ahead and uh, hit <coughs> your share button. Go ahead, hit your share button and uh, let me come to you with uh, the presentation. Go ahead, hit your share button, let those numbers rise, let those numbers rise, let those numbers rise. Again, I come to you with uh, very, very important, very important uh, announcements uh, that I wish to make, and I will also be making some brief commentaries on those announcements. I want to say so thank you, a very special thank you to my own able undersecretary, Kuku Dablings. She did a fabulous job, a fabulous job in laying out the case for this interim government and this cabinet and of course for this revolution. This revolution we have heard it again and again and again it is not about one man. It will never be about one man. The leaders will come and they will go. The revolution and the struggle and the vision, the vision, the vision to Boya will stay. It is not about one individual, not about a group of individuals. It is about eight million people. It is about all those corpses that we see uh, emerging from our streets, our towns, our villages. It is about all those burnt down homes, towns and villages in Ambazonia. And so if any one man makes the mistake of thinking that uh, without him, without her, this thing is doomed, they make a fabulous, a fabulous mistake. And once more, I'd like to uh, congratulate uh, Kukuda Blings for a wonderful presentation that uh, she made this uh, uh, evening. I hope you all got it. I'm not here to talk about what uh, uh, Sisiko did. I will uh, have time to talk about that in some other uh, presentation. Uh, in fact, I want to promise you I have, very, I have a very, very special presentation that I shall be bringing to you, possibly that will be Monday. It shall be a tell-all, as I call it, a tell-all, a tell-all uh, story. Uh, you, may rea you, may have, you, may, you may have you may have known I had over an hour, an hour of conversation with uh, Sisiko last Friday and uh, he kind of explained to me in details why he took the decision that he took and the reasons, I mean the reasons for the decisions that he took and uh, I kind of prevailed upon him again and again to retract it uh, and he just wasn't willing to retract it. Uh, since discussing with him that Friday for over an hour, uh, I have also, also written to him 
at the personal level to appeal that he reconsiders that position and retract it for his own good and for the good of the struggle, the revolution. Uh, of course, I did not get uh, any response uh, from him yet, but I am hoping, I am sincerely hoping that uh, Sisiko will think of the thousands that have been killed, the thousands of homes that have been burnt down, the thousands, the hundreds of thousands of those Amazonians who live in the bush, who are only in the bush because they ask for their own country. I hope you will look at the thousands of Amazonians who live in refugee land in Nigeria. They are in refugee land only because they ask for a country, a country of their own. I hope, I hope that for the interests of these people, not for those of us who are in the diaspora, not even for him, not even for him in prison, he will, he will change his mind for the good of our country and for the good of all these people. I hope you will. And I uh, said to him, uh, making a retraction should not be seen as a witness. It's a strength for every leader to say, I made a mistake and I want to make it right. You all will remember a few months ago in December, this interim government uh, made a decision to cancel the ghost towns, the regular ghost towns for Mondays. And once Ground Zero spoke, once Ground Zero spoke and said, you cannot take it away. Christmas is about us. New Year is about us. Because we had taken the decision to give them a breathing space to make a little money for the month of December. At least to be able to buy bread, buy rice, buy whatever, maybe a pant, a slippers, a shoe, a, a cloth for their children in the month or for their children for Christmas and for the new year. We thought we were doing that on behalf of Ground Zero. We thought we were being uh, 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 empathic with their situation. But once Ground Zero spoke and said, we want ghost towns to stay, in spite of the coming Christmas, we immediately recognized we made a mistake that the interim government had made a mistake and we gave it to ground zero and we acknowledged it was a fault. They had spoken and we withdrew that. I think that is what leadership is all about. When you make a mistake and you are bold enough in spite of the consequences to come back and say I was wrong and I am withdrawing or retracting my position or my decision. I am really hoping and hoping and hoping that Sisiko will turn back and say, Ambazonians, I was wrong. I made a mistake. I am with you. I hear you. Because I think the overwhelming, again, the overwhelming, I was listening to Kukuda Blings a few, about an hour ago, I could listen. I listened to the phone calls people were making. I read the comments people were making. And I can tell that for the past three or four days, Ambazonians have overwhelmingly said, Sisiko, you are wrong. And I hope, I truly hope, Sisiko will be a patriot and come back and say, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Ambazonians, I was wrong. Let's fix our government and move on. Again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining the broadcast. And uh, I come to you not to speak about this uh, subject of Sisiko, but I come to you with some very, very important uh, events that are coming up. And I thought I should bring that information, that announcement, and uh, the news to you. Uh, I thought I was going to be taking some phone calls, but I will not. I will hold on to those phone calls because I think 
Kukuda Blinks did a great job with those phone calls. I don't need to belabor them. So, uh, but I promise you, I am coming up with a very, very detailed analysis of my conversation with Sisiko. And some of you are asking, why did he do this? Why did he do this? Why did he do this? I am going to come up with those answers exactly, exactly the way he told me. Again, I had about an hour of, of conversation with him uh, last Friday, and I thought I should put it out so that all of you should know where his mindset is. Thank you again for joining. Let me see you. I like the way the numbers are rising. Please go ahead, ladies and gentlemen. Continue to hit that uh, share button as you join. I will be coming to you really, really soon with these very, very important announcements. But let me see who is joining and let me know where you are joining from place. Let me know the location you are joining in from. Tengen Bayoro is watching. All right. I also see Fidelis in Jinjo. Fidelis is watching. Tabo Teodo. Tabo Teodo is always Always, always, always are uh, here. Thank you, Theodore, for being uh, a faithful, a faithful uh, 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 supporter here. Patricia, yes, always here too. Uh, Zoe Anderson, Theophilus Kum, Mami Ash, Leonata, Thomas Indula, uh, you Jamod, I see you. F Ash, yes, thank you, thank you. Uh, Alejandro, like this man, always, always, A.P. Brian, Info Abdurrahman, Abdurrahman, Von Kem Valentine, Profre Kells. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I will call more of your names, but, uh, let me go on and, uh, make some other remarks before I go to this presentation, uh, in, uh, a more proper manner. Uh, I uh, again want you to know that 20th May is coming up 20th May is coming up and it is one of those events that we have banned that this interim government and all the nationalist groups in Ambazonia have banned from taking place in our territory Ambazonia we are appealing to every Ambazonian on ground zero. Please, you love your life, you love your property, you love your family, you love everything around you. You do not, again, you do not want to expose yourself to the dangers that lie ahead for 20th May. Any attempts, any attempts at celebrating 20th May in Ambazonia. Again, I shall be finding time to talk a little bit more about 20th May. You will realize, you will recall, French Cameroon had their independence on the, uh, January 1st, 1960. And uh, Ambazonia, or the Southern Cameroons, got their independence from, I mean, in the uh, October 1960. Now, I think 20th May 1972, what La Republic du Cameroon did to totally and completely annex us and make us a non-existent entity, nation, what they did, they now cancelled, kind of cancelled January 1960 when they got their independence and cancelled 1st of October 19, 1961, when the Saudi Cameroon got independence, and then in 1972, 20th May 1972, they said, let us merge these two days together so that it appears before the international community that our national day, our day of independence, the day we all became one nation, is, nine, is 20th of May. That was 1972. The moment they did that, our identity vanished. 
They went back to the Republic of Cameroon or La Republic du Cameroon. The Southern Cameroons no longer existed. Now let me correct something that a lot of us, a lot of us make a mistake about. Ladies and gentlemen, listen carefully. When we refer to the Southern Cameroons, the Southern Cameroons is not the south of Cameroon. Physically, it is the south of Cameroon. But listen, the Southern Cameroons is not, uh, uh, the appellation has nothing to do with, uh, let me call it uh, East Cameroon. Remember when you cross the Mongo, we are called West Cameroon. You cross the other side of the Mongo to Douala, Bonabari, and stuff, and the rest of that, and the rest of that part, it is called, it was called East Cameroon. Now the word or the name Southern Cameroons wasn't an appellation uh, to imply uh, that we are just part of Cameroon, the, 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 the East, part of East Cameroon. Now you will recall that during the plebiscite, there was another part of Cameroon called Northern Cameroon, British Northern Cameroon, and we were called the British Southern Cameroons. When you hear the appellation uh, Southern Cameroons or British Southern Cameroons, it is because there was a Northern or British Northern Cameroon. I hope this makes a tremendous difference and some lessons in your ears. Our name, the Southern Cameroons, didn't come from Cameroon. It was because there was a Northern Cameroon that went over to Nigeria. And the Southern Cameroons, which is Ambazonia, became independent October 1st, 1961. So Southern Cameroon, the name Southern Cameroon has nothing, nothing to do with East Cameroon, which got independence in 19, 1960. So ladies and gentlemen, we have banned, we have banned 28 May from taking place anywhere in the territory called the Southern Cameroons. And La Republic du Cameroon or East Cameroon can pour in any amount of troops into our territory. I want them to know, we in this interim government want them to know. Unless they show up to match with their guns as they did on the mountain race occasion in Boya, they are not going to see any Ambazonian coming out to patronize the annexation of our people and our territory. If the warning is out, the warning is out. You go out on the 20th of May, you will do so at your own risk. Our security forces, the restoration forces, have been tasked with enforcing. Again, our security and restoration forces have been tasked with enforcing, enforcing this 20th May ban in all, all of Ambazonia. We are warning everybody, we thank God for the chiefs. The chiefs have finally, finally stood up or stand up to uh, Okalia Bilai. And now I remember that name, right? Okalia Ibilai. Okalia Bilai. So, Ibilai said chiefs, they will go, they will go march with their placards on their hands. Yenim Naze Okalia Bilai. No, we say Okalia Bilai. So take note of that. Our chiefs are standing up and speaking truth to power in Boya. And I am a little bit disappointed with the chiefs in the northern zone. I think by now the chiefs in the northern zone would have sent out a press statement uh, castigating even the thought, just the mere thought, of a colonial governor up in the southern zone asking chiefs to go and march at Bongo Square with placards on their hands. Because the chiefs in the northwest or in the northern zone should not think that this is only happening in the southern zone. It could as well, they could as well be asked by their colonial governor, Lelela Frick, to make sure they show up 
at the Babanda Grandstand and marched with their subjects and marched with their placards on their hands. Ladies and gentlemen, I am appealing, uh, let me not use myself, we at this interim government, we are appealing to all, all the Northern Chiefs, the Northern Chiefs Union or Association, you all Ambazonians, a letter of protest or petition to your governor and to the colonial uh, president in French Cameroon that never, never, never will you go out and march on the 20th May. It has never happened. I grew up all the way, all the way on ground zero. Never for once, never for once did I see chiefs, not even for class, hotel class chiefs going out to march on 11 February. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, again, I'm appealing to, I'm appealing to all the northern chiefs. We expect you to write to your governor in that, in the, your colonial governor in that place and tell him what Okalia be lie, if he do, for Boya was an abomination to your institution. All right. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Now I can dive into the presentation of this broadcast proper again i want to thank you thank you for joining thank you ground zero for tuning in through abc before i go to uh that presentation proper i just want to say this i just want to make a very very important appeal ladies and gentlemen fellow ambazonians our revelations is at the crossroads many in many areas we have Lots and lots of uh, battles that we are fighting right now. Battles we are confronting right now. And one of the most important one is not, again, it's not the letter from Sisiko. It is the financial state of this struggle. I've seen how mad some of you have been out there at the uh, at the publication of that letter, that listen, remember, no one man, no one man can destabilize this revolution. The only thing that will destabilize this revolution is money. And here I come to you, pleading with you, making a very special appeal for the bills of A, B, C, and by television, please. I want to appeal to you for a generous, another generous donation that we can cover some of the bills that ABC is still owing the satellite company. There are many of you out there who can dip your hands in your pocket and pay this bill for a month or for half a month. I want to tell you, ABC is struggling. I can't hide it. It is not my property. I am just overseeing it. If it is shut down tomorrow, you probably will be calling uh, Secretary Chris to find out what happened. But before they do that, I would like to tell you before that happens, ABC is still owing the satellite company three months of arrears unpaid. We were able to raise some money to pay, uh, uh, to pay some of the bills, but some other months have since elapsed, and again it has gone back to three months. I'm sure you heard some people told you that ABC can just function on Facebook. It's a blessing that we have Facebook and you can watch it right here on Facebook, but those on Grand Zero cannot watch it on Facebook. They are watching it on their television sets. They cannot watch it on Facebook because they don't have the bandwidth to be able to go online and watch television. But even putting it on Facebook, those who argue that we can run our propaganda, our information mechanism on Facebook, have also surely learned that Facebook is disconnecting them. They are now scrambling to look for a platform where they can present their activism. So ladies and gentlemen, if we lose ABC television, we have no other means we have no other channel to reach out to Ambazonians on Ground Zero. 
And so I make a sincere appeal to you. Please, if you can help, if you can make a donation, if you can make a donation, I want to appeal to ABC uh, staff or communication staff uh, that is watching me. I don't have the number and the, ash, and the cash app uh, information with me. But please, ABC uh, staff and communication staff that is watching uh, this broadcast, can you please, can you please put the cash app number for ABC on your screen so that uh, people can make generous donations through the cash app and through PayPal. Put that information on this platform so that people can uh, make donations, please. Please, I am really appealing to you. If we don't have money, we cannot run this revolution. No one person will stop this revolution. What will stop this revolution is money. And as I promised at the beginning of this broadcast, I shall be coming back to tackle some of the financial issues that have been raised, so-called financial embezzlement or mismanagement. I will come up and dedicate and dedicate a show, a presentation to open your eyes to what you don't know. I think that the moment has come, the moment has come that all of you Ambazonians know exactly what has been going on with your interim government so as far as finances, finance management is concerned. I can vouch to you that no one has, no one in this leadership has mismanaged your money. People that we have trusted with your money, embezzled your money, and I promise you, I will bring you that information. And you will be surprised that this other new cabinet that is being formed, is being formed out of the same people who crook you and embezzled and mismanage your money, and I promise you, the moment is coming, we will put them out there. Because you cannot have people who are fired from one rich, from one, from one system because of your mismanagement and they just turn to the left to form up another tank where they collect your funds and embezzle them, use them for their own selfish interests. I will be coming to that. I will dedicate a presentation on that. That I assure you. But for now, my appeal to you is please, please, uh, I believe that the uh, communication staff has put up some information, payment information on the platform here for you to uh, make generous donations for us to be able to be able to meet up with ABC bills. And if you really need, if you really need to talk to me about ABC, the burden that we have at ABC, you want to reach me. You can reach me after the show, after the show, on the number 832-803-3067. Again, that number is 832-803-3067. I'm sorry, 832. All right, good. You can find the, the number on your screen right now. So that's the number that you can reach me if you really need to know the burdens that we have, the financial burdens that we have here at uh, ABC. So please call this number. I know there are some of you, there are some of you who would like to do anonymous donations. If you call this number, you'll be able to reach me to make, uh, so I can explain to you exactly the burdens that we have here at ABC. I remember that during my trip to Boya campaign, quite a number of people called me and said, Chris, I have 5,000 to donate, but I don't want my name mentioned. I don't want even a receipt. I want to donate to ABC. I know there are some of you like that who would like to do so. Please, you can call this number you find on your screen and talk with me and I will share with you exactly how you can help ABC. Again, ABC is still owing three months, three months of arrears for the satellite company. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the only B plus 
uh, the internet bill that ABC is paying right now. Nobody is being uh, given anything. All the volunteers are running ABC for now. We are just striving to get it up and to get to, to get to, to get it stay afloat. Please do not call now because I see some people calling now. Until I get off the air, do not call. Do not call. Uh, so please, you can call this number. You can call this number if you want to donate anonymously after I get off this set today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that understanding. Now, let me take you to the presentation that I bring to you today. When I uh, promised coming to you today, I was going to speak on uh, an issue, an, uh, a subject uh, connected to Dr. Fonten uh, Neva. You all uh, know the role that Dr. Fonten Neva has been playing in this revolution all of, of recent. He got to the U.S. only very recently from uh, Ambazonia, and he has been playing a, very, a role which has turned out to be very, very controversial. Very, very controversial. Yesterday, he was a hero. Today, Ambazonians are condemning him. And I thought to come to you and talk about certain things. But, uh, but through a third party, through a third party, uh, Dr. Fontaine promised that he would come on ABC on Thursday to answer questions about issues that he has raised, matters he has raised, most especially that, uh, uh, that statement in which uh, he said Dr. S uh, Dr. Sarko or the interim government was taking off of SCRC. And so I was going to talk about that and address some of the issues that he raised in that statement. But the third part, he reached out to a third party and the third party got reached out to me and he has promised, Dr. Fontaine has promised he will come on ABC on Thursday to answer whatever question that uh, he may be asked. And what I'm going to do on Thursday, after speaking with him, I will have the phone line open for all of you, for all of you who have questions for him to ask directly. And so I'm not going to touch on that subject right now with Dr. Fontaine. I will leave it for Thursday and allow him to answer the questions from his own lips. So I will skip that. But there are two other subjects that I like to talk about. First, ladies and gentlemen, the South African government is standing on the way. The South African government is standing on the way to our struggle, to our independence, to our move to Boya. This is very, very, very important. We have been able to secure quite a number, at least, listen to me, this is breaking news I'm giving you. We have, this interim government has been able to secure at least 10 sitting members at the United Nations Security Council to listen to us and who are sympathetic, sympathetic to our cause. They instructed us, I hope you are listening to me, those 10 United Nations members have said to us, we need some African countries on the table, on our side, to work with us. And they proposed South Africa. Instead of South Africa coming in to say, let's stand with our persecuted brothers, as they themselves were perse persecuted by a minority white government, the South African government shifted the responsibility to the, to, the, to the AU, the African Union, knowing so well that the leadership of the African Union has been bribed by the BL regime, the BL junta, to turn their face to the genocide, to the massacres going on in Ambazonia. Now, not only that, not only that, South Africa, through its one of its ministry, a group in South Africa which is being sponsored by its government, uh, is sponsoring an investment trade fair in French Cameroon. 
That company is called Westgro. W E G R O. Uh, I, I made a very mi big mistake uh, coming up here without getting their phone number. I was going to get their phone number to get on the script here so all of you can get that phone number. But uh, I will ask uh, Honorable Daniel, who is the uh, Ambazonia uh, Ambassador at the United Nations. If you are listening to me, Honorable Daniel, uh, put that number, put that information on the screen, on this platform. Let Ambazonia know what South Africa, the South African government is doing to puncture this revolution. A company in South Africa called Westco, no, sorry, Westgro, W-E-G-R-S-O. That's an acronym. It is, called, it is sponsoring an international trade fair in French Cameroon. And that trade fair is taking place on June the 7th, from June the 17th to June the 21st. June the 17th through June the twenty first. That trade fair the South, through the South African government is inviting international investors into French Cameroon to come and invest inside French Cameroon. Now you know what that means. What the South African government through West Grow is doing is essentially trying to lobby international firms, international investment firms to go into La Republic at this moment where the Republic is being held for human rights abuses, for killings, for torture, for genocide, for decimations, and for arson all over Ambazonia to invest, to give them money, more money, to buy more ammunition, to buy more ammunition to kill Ambazonians. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to stand up to the South African government. And I think if there are any Ambazonians in South Africa, they should take note of this. The company name is West Grow. West Grow. It's called West. Let me see. I can get the full acronym of uh, that company. Please give me one moment. Let me get the acronym of that company. Uh, we have to stop. We have to stop West Grow from holding that international trade fair to bring uh, business people into Cameroon, French Cameroon, to invest, to give the French Cameroon money, to buy more ammunition, more machinery, to kill our people. I'm trying to see if I can get some a little more information here about uh, that uh, uh, that group. Okay, this is what uh, Westgro has put out there. This is what Westgro has put out there. Actually, uh, Westgro is uh, is called uh, is called Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I understand the number is now on the screen. The number for West Grow, I guess, is on the screen. And please also do me a favor, ladies and gentlemen, for the staff and Honorable Daniel, put the uh, Twitter handle for West Grow. West Grow. I hope I got it right. Uh, West Grow, yes, West Grow is W E S G R O. West Grow. So please put their Twitter handle on the screen. Put their email and put their telephone number. Ambazonians in the diaspora. It won't cost you anything to call the uh, that to call that company, and also call. And I think Ambazonians in South Africa should give us more directives on how to approach this. 
But we must stop that trade fair that West Grow through the South African government is putting up in the French Cameroon, essentially putting money, money in the hands of French Cameroon to uh, continue slaughtering, killing our people. So ladies and gentlemen, let us stand up. Let us stand up to this company. Again, that trade fair in Douala is holding June the 17th through uh, June, uh, June the 21st. And uh, I have detailed information here. I will try to get it up. I will try to get that information up on the website or Facebook page of uh, ABC right after this broadcast. But we need to call them. We need to tweet that this is a company that is putting money in the hands of French Cameroon to buy more ammunition to kill Amazonians. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not too hard to tweet, to make a phone call, to send an email. I hope that the staff is putting, and Honorable Daniel, you are putting that information on the screen here for Amazonians uh, to take note. Now let me go to the most important subject of the day about the United Nations Security Council meeting on the 13th, on the 13th of this month of May in New York. Deliberating, they have called it informal, informal discussions on the conflict in Ambazonia, between Ambazonia and French Cameroon. Before I get there proper, I want also want to talk about the visit of the United Nations Human Rights Commissioner that took place recently to French Cameroon. Ambazonians, listen to me very, very, very carefully. This revolution, this revolution, we should not be mistaken. Our independence does not lie in the palms of the international community. If the international want, if the international community wants anything or want to see anything happen, any solution, the solution that the international community has is to see a change of regime in French Cameroon. Let us have this in mind. We should not be deceived. We should not be fooled that the international community is trying to give us our country back. Even the same countries that voted, was it 62 or 63, 63 nations that voted for our independence in 1961 as the United Nations. These same countries, the European countries, they are the same countries who are turning their backs on us. We should not be fooled thinking that they are out there campaigning for us, fighting for us to get our sovereignty. It is we, Ambazonians, who would have to fight and persevere to take back our country. The United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights was in Cameroon very, very recently. And today I got a statement that uh, she sent out, quite a very lengthy statement. I cannot read everything. But I went through and I highlighted some part of the statement. And I'm going to decode this statement to your understanding. Ladies and gentlemen, the United Nations is not out to grant Ambazonia her independence. The United Nations and all its allies are out to change the regime in French Cameroon. And their plan is, if we change the regime in French Cameroon, and put maybe Kanto over, over, over there, or put some other leader on the throne in French Cameroon, and get that new leader to go on his knees and plead with the secessionists, as they call us, or the separatists, as they call us, they will then prevail on the secessionists or the separatists to agree to some form of decentralization or maybe or their form of federation. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Ambazonians, this is what the international community 
has in their books, have in their plans. This is to tell you, we should not relax. We should not sit and get excited at all. The United Nations is going to French Cameroon. The Commonwealth is going to French Cameroon. Or the European Union is issuing out letters and so on and so forth. Those letters and those visits to Cameroon, they have not mentioned Ambazonia for a second. The Human Rights Commissioner was in French Cameroon. And do you know who he met? Who she met? She met the Cameroon, the Cameroon government officials. She did not go to Boyano Bamenda to see what prevails on the ground. The civil society organizations that she met on the ground in Ambazonia were all federalist, federalist, unionist organizations. I'm sure you listen to, you, you listen or watch the message that Carl Walla put out there. I'm sure you also read or listened to the message that uh, Akeremona put out there. Are these people that you think will stand and speak for an independent Ambazonia? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So ladies and gentlemen, let me read some of the excerpts that uh, came out from the visit of the United Nations uh, High Commissioner for Refugees. Let me start from the first paragraph. The United Nations Commissioner for Human Rights, Michel Bachelet, after concluding a visit to Cameroon, has welcomed the Cameroon government's openness. Openness. Now, not that. Openness. The Cameroon government has always said they are open, open for anything. But they have never been open for dialogue. The same international community has been shouting inclusive dialogue for years now in counting. For years, over three years in counting. And the French Cameroon regime keeps on saying we are open. And the same people keep on believing they are open. French Cameroon regime is not open. They are ready to crush us and decimate us so that they cannot tell the same international community we are done with them. We have crushed them. We are finished with them. The secessionists are gone. The separatists are dealt with. So, but that is it. So, the, you know, the human rights, the United Nations Human Rights Commissioner believes, believes that the Cameroon, French Cameroon regime is open to dialogue. Dialogue they have never called for for the past three years, ladies and gentlemen. After concluding a visit to Cameroon, has welcomed the government's openness to work with the United Nations Human Rights Office. This is the same human rights uh, organization whose staff went to Cameroon only a few days ago and they refused them entry. The French Cameroon dictatorial regime would not allow them enter the country. All right. Oh. Uh, and the rest of the United Nations to seek effective solutions to the, to the major human rights and humanitarian crisis caused by the serious unrest and violence taking place in the west and the north of the country. Now, quoting her directly, she says, I believe there is a clear, if possibly short, window of opportunity to arrest the crisis that have led to hundreds of thousands of internally displaced people, as well as the killings and brutal human rights violations and abuses that have affected the northern and western areas of the country. Did you hear that? I don't want to comment that, but she continues. The human rights, UN Human Rights Commissioner continues and she says, but, but, it will not be easy to turn these situations around. It will take significant actions on the part of the government and substantial and sustained support from the international community, including, including the United Nations. Now, not this, not this. The challenges are immense. The UN the Human Rights Commissioner writes, the challenges are immense. And the situation involving some 10 or more separatist 
separatist movements in the northwest and southwest regions risk spiraling completely out of control if serious measures are not taken to reduce tensions and restore trust. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't need trust in French Cameroon. The United Nations should understand this. We don't need trust from French Cameroon to sit on any table with them. We have lived with French Cameroon for 57 years and counting. The, dicta the dictator Paul Beer has been there for 36 years and counting. 36 years, 57 years are enough to build trust. Not at this moment when, when we have made up our minds. We are gone and we are gone for good. If the United Nations is interested in fixing this problem, they should call us Ambazonians and call authorities in French Cameroon to sit on the table. Ladies and gentlemen, the so-called inclusive dialogue, we do not, we do not buy it. Because this is what French Cameroon will do. French Cameroon will eventually say, we agree to inclusive dialogue. Inclusive dialogue, do not be mistaken. The word means getting everybody to sit on the table. They will get the uh, Musonge Commission to sit on the table. They will get all those fake human rights, so-called civil societies in, in, in French Cameroon. The Kawalas, the Akere Monas, and so on, the Balas. They will get all of them to sit on the table as different factions. They will now say, let's get a few secessionists or separatists to also sit on the table. Ladies and gentlemen, inclusive dialogue is a no beginner. We call it inclusive de negotiation. And that negotiation can only take place within two, between two parties. French Cameroon as a nation and the Southern Cameroon representative as another nation as in 1961. That is the kind of dialogue or negotiation we are looking for. We do not want any form of inclusive dialogue where all these so-called civil societies are considered as party to that dialogue. There can only be two parties, two parties to any form of dialogue or negotiation. And those two parties are French Cameroon and the Southern Cameroons. Short and simple. When they come to the Southern Cameroons, the leaders of the Southern Cameroons, ladies and gentlemen, will decide. They will decide who represents them. La Republique du Cameroon will not choose, pick and choose who sits on the negotiation table to represent Ambazonia. We Ambazonians, we know our leaders. We know who to represent us. We know who to sit in there for us. We don't want people who go there with suitcases and go in and come out with money loaded in their suitcases. Remember what they tried to do to Tassan Wifre in Bamenda during the consortium negotiation. They called him and said, we will give you money. So you just forget about this thing. Just take the money, 500 million. We will give you the money so you can walk away and forget about this cause. And Tassan Wifre said, no, we do not. We do not trust any group, be, there, be, be it in Ambazonia or in French Cameroon, so-called civil society that they may want to pick to represent us on the table. We don't even want the religious community. Listen, listen, ladies and gentlemen, listen to me carefully. Ambazonian leaders will choose who represent Ambazonia. If they want to in, in, include some religious authorities, that is good. They want to include some civil societies. It shall be Ambazonian to pick Ambazonians that represent Ambazonians on that negotiation table. And so the idea of an inclusive dialogue has to be clearly defined by powers that matter before Mr. Bia calls up that dialogue. Mr. Bia calls up any dialogue between some federalists, unionists, and so-called separatists, we will boycott it. Absolutely, we will boycott it. 
This conflict is only between two parties, Southern Cameroonians and French Cameroon. All right, now I move on here. Now, this lady, uh, the, UN, the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, continues here. He says, she says, there is also a general understanding that the root causes and underlying grievances must also be tackled if long-term stability is to return to a country that had, until just few years ago, been one of the most settled and peaceful in the region. Again, this United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights is still seeing French Cameroon and Southern Cameroon in the prison of a single nation, referring to uh, one Cameroon. Ladies and gentlemen, all our brothers who have died, all our homes and towns and cities burnt down. They were not burned down because we didn't ask for federation of a union with Cameroon. Those people died fighting for a free and an independent Southern Cameroon. Uh, it didn't have to take all these killings. It didn't have to take all these massacres for us to go and negotiate for a federation. That will not happen. We have gone too far to turn and look back for a federation, for a one Cameroon. At the beginning, the very beginning of this conflict, we asked for a return to federation. And instead of inviting us to sit down on a dialogue table and decide what form of federation they chose to kill us. They chose to burn down our towns and our cities. They chose to drive away our brothers and our sisters into refugee camps and to the forest. We have gone too far right now to even consider for a minute, for a second, any form of federation. And so, and so uh, we are not going back to that. There is also a general understanding. Now, this is the United Nations High Commissioner for, the, for Human Rights speaking. There is also a general understanding that the root causes and underlying grievances must also be tackled. That is very true. We agree with that. And the root causes, one of the root causes of this war is that we were annexed. After we obtained independence, we, the Southern Cameroonians, were annexed. That is the root cause of this conflict. We want a return to the sovereignty to what obtained, ladies and gentlemen. In 1960, the Southern Cameroon was self-governing. The Southern Cameroon had a police and an army of its own. The Southern Cameroon had its own educational system. The Southern Cameroon had its banking system. The Southern Cameroon had its own country, its own identity, culture, and language. That is what we are talking about. That is what we are looking back at. And if the root causes have to be discussed, this is exactly what they are. Nothing more, nothing less. Let me go up to another paragraph where she says, the security forces have also been accused of committing serious violations. The security forces, the security forces of French Cameroon, she writes. He says, she says, including extrajudicial killings. French Cameroon security forces have also been accused of committing serious violations, including extrajudicial killings and torture against civilians and captured fighters in both the North and the West. During three days of meetings and consultations in the capital, Yaoundé, the High Commissioner had an in-depth discussion with President Paul Beer on the human rights challenges facing the country and initiatives the government has taken to deal with them, as well as their broader linkages with peace, security, and development. She also met with the Prime Minister. Now, I want you to note those she is meeting. Note those the, U the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights is meeting in Yaoundé or met in Yaoundé. 
uh, 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 the, the note the note the note continues she also met with the prime minister and the minister of external relations the minister of defense alongside top army and uh, police officials the minister of territorial administration that is paul atanga ng those are the people that they meet or uh, the minister of justice the man who is trying our leaders Sisiko and others in a military tribunal. She met her. She met, she met him. The Minister of Women, Empowerment and Family. And the Minister of Secondary Education. That is uh, Nalova Luanga, I guess. These are some of the people that uh, the UN High Commissioner for Refugees met. Now, that it continues. The UN Human Rights Chief thanked the President for inviting her and express appreciation to him and the members of his government, the BI government, as well as her other interlocutors, including civil society organizations and media. The National Commission on Human Rights, now remember, the National Commission on Human Rights in French Cameroon is a government poor BS funded commission. They all, she also met uh, the president and the vice president of the Senate in uh, French Cameroon. She says she also met opposition and ruling party politicians and seven senior leaders of various religious communities, as well as the diplomatic corps. She also noted with appreciation mm -hmm. the briefings she received from the leaders of two new bodies set up by the president. Which president? Paul Bia, of course, to tackle specific issues related to the problems in the West and the North, namely the National Commission for the Promotion of Bilingualism and Multiculturalism and the National Disarmament, Demobilization and Reintegration Committee. She said, and I quote, the work of these two bodies is still in its early stages. That is not true. These two bodies have been in the, have been functioning for, for, for quite a month. I mean, the, the Musonge Commission has been functioning for going to two years. Two years. What have they done? They sit there and they spend money and recommend that the titles or appellations and the phone and Francophone appellation should be abolished. That is all that it has done. Is that how you solve a problem? All right. Now, she continues, and I quote, But I believe they can potentially make important contributions over time to better understand and deal with the crisis in, these two, in the two western regions and to encourage increasing numbers of fighters to lay down their arms. I hope you are hearing this. The UN, the United Nations Human Rights uh, Commissioner, is encouraging Paul Bia's Disarmament Commission and Musonge, Musonge, Musonge uh, Bilingualism Commission to work towards persuading secessionists and separatist fighters to lay down their arms. Ladies and gentlemen, if you do not understand what this means, let me explain to you once more. The international community is not out there. They don't care about the rights, the abuse, the genocide that is taking place in the southern Cameroons. They just want to see Paul Bia remain in power. Paul Bia has been in power for already 36 years in county. What they want to see is have him stay in power, then replace him, and then just get us to go back and join them. They are not concerned that thousands, close to 10,000 of our brothers and sisters and fathers and mothers have been murdered by the French Cameroon regime. They are not concerned that they have broken their own international laws by not going back to their files to see what they voted in 1961, the free the independence 
of a free Southern Cameroons. They do not. All they want to see is get our boys, restoration forces, to lay down their arms. I would like every intern, everybody in the international community to understand this. We did not pick up arms. And Bazonians did not pick up arms until French Cameroon dictator Imperial Paul Bia stood at his air, on his airport on November 30th, 2017 and declared war on Ambazonians, on the people he referred to as his own citizens, one and indivisible Cameroon. We did not pick up arms until they pulled their armored cars and tankers into our streets, towns and villages and began burning down our homes. We did not pick up arms until they began. Remember the official comedy from the senior colonial divisional officer in Manu asking people to leave their safe arbors and run away, run out of Manfi. That was the first time we had refugees moving out of southern Cameroon onto Nigeria. We did not invite that. We did not call for that. That provoked our boys to pick up arms to defend our territory, to defend our country, to defend their own families. And since then, the Republic of Cameroon has taken advantage of that to, de to, to, to discern on our people, burning down hundreds, hundreds of villages. If the United Nations and the international community wants us to lay down our arms, want our boys to lay down their arms, the solution is they asking Mr. Beer to pull out their troops from our territory. That is the first thing we will want to see. They want Ambazonians to lay down their arms. They should prevail on French Cameroon to withdraw all, all of their troops from our territory and also release all our leaders in your dungeons, the dungeons of French Cameroon. I am shocked reading through this document that the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights did not for a moment, for a second, mention the imprisonment, the illegal imprisonment, the abduction of our leader under her custody in Nigeria, UNHCR. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. The United Nations leader did not mention for once the abduction of our president from her custody in Nigeria illegally into French Cameroon and, and they are being tried in, in a military tribunal. She did not mention that. How can we lay down our arms knowing that our leaders are in jail, are in dungeons? How can we lay down our arms knowing that our towns, our villages have been burned down and our people are killed every day? Ladies and gentlemen, if there is anything we should do, if there is anything, anything Ambazonian should be doing now, it is not to lay down our arms. It was to form the restoration forces on ground zero. Diplomacy will come second. Action on ground zero is what we want now. It is now. And if you are out there and you are mad as I am today over this statement, please get to your local government. Get to your local government. Get to your county. Form your county. Pay your dues. Let us provide for those boys on ground zero who are putting their lives on the front lines, on the, on the front lines and defending Ambazonia, fighting for Ambazonia. We have no choice but to do this. There is no way we are going to lay down our hands because we come to realize the only language, the only language that French Cameroon understands is the language of force. Do not forget, when we began this struggle under the Albert Mukongs, the Infongalanfo, the Martin Lumas, and so on and so forth, it was the, the power of argument against the power of force. That was the motto. 
We never picked up arms. We never thought about arms. We came to talk, uh, to, to think about arms only when they officially declared war on us. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Ambazonians, this is the moment we must prove to the French Cameroon regime and the international community that we want nothing less than our own country, the Federal Republic of Ambazonia. They have deprived and denied us that country for 57 years. 57 years. We did not start agitating today, just today, for Ambazonia. We have been fighting for long, looking through dialogue. We had conference after conference, AAC1, AAC2, talking about dialogue, sending petitions. We had meetings and invited the French Cameroon regime to reason with us. They failed. They called us names. They called us Nigerians. They called us two cubes of sugar. They told us that we will soon get... They told our lawyers, when you are hungry, you will go back to the court. They call us all sorts of names. Their governors call us dogs. How can we, how can we, knowing all of this, want to go back to maintain the same status of dogs, Nigerian, Biafras, two cubes of sugar? We cannot do that. I am pleading to every Ambazonian. I have said here again and again, we must live free or die fighting. We must live free or die fighting. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Ambazonians, get out. If you care, if you really have the, the interest of this revolution, if you want a free Ambazonia, and let me say this before I move on. There are some of you out there who are saying, I am old enough. And there, are, and there are very many people out there, especially Ambazonians in French Cameroon, who have made up so much investment in French Cameroon, and some who have grown old, who are saying, I am old already. I am 60 years old, 70 years old, 80 years old. Why should I fight? Why should I engage in this? Ladies and gentlemen, if you are saying you no longer have much time to live and so you cannot fight for this uh, liberation uh, struggle, remember, Mami Api, remember, Mami Api, she was more than 80 years old when she went out that day advocating for a free and independent Ambazonia when she was gone down by French Cameroon forces. That woman wasn't fighting for herself. She wasn't fighting for herself. She was fighting for her children. She had already lived her life. In fact, there are very many people like Mami Api who have been gone down for stepping out to advocate for a free Southern Cameroon. And so my appeal to you out there who says, I have lived my life. I don't need to get in, I don't need to get involved in this. I want you to know you have children. You have children's children. What future can you leave for them? What do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? Standing up now on your old age, like Chief Mukete did the other day, I know we, most of us don't support what, she, what he did. But Mukete was like, what do I have to lose? I have lived my life. Let me say this, if they want to kill me, let them kill me. Fellow Ambazonians, this is the moment every one of us, without be it on ground zero, on ground one, in the diaspora as a whole, this is the moment we need to sponsor this revolution. If we do not sponsor this revolution, 
the international community will get all of us back as slaves, as second class citizens into the hands of our colonizers, French Cameroon. Locate your county. Let's build local governments by local government. The interim government is not asking you to send your, your money to the center. The interim government is saying to you, locate your interim government. Every restoration force that exists in your local government, we don't want to hear them saying they need uh, 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 peanuts, they need sticks or Bibles, they call it. We don't want to hear that. This is the moment they must get what they need to prosecute this revolution to the end. Please, let's leave this partisanship. We are not in a multi-party system. We are still fighting for an animal that is in the bush, that is not caught yet. Let us fight as a team. Forget where you belong. Look at your community, your local government, your county. If your county takes it over, we all rejoice. We all celebrate and we don't label names over it. We don't say Sako got it or Sisiku got it. We say Ambazonians. Ambazonians got it. So I am challenging every Ambazonian, ladies and gentlemen, let's not live in the illusion that going to the United Nations Security Council on May the 13th, they are going to hand us Ambazonia. Absolutely not. They are going there to discuss Kanto. They are going there to discuss human rights. But, 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 this is very important. We all, now this is the official announcement. We all, every Ambazonian in this country, in the United States, May the 13th, May the 13th is a very, very important event. This is the very first time that we are having the opportunity for our case to come up at the United Nations uh, Security Council. It's quite a privilege. And as I said to you from the beginning, this is information none of you knows. None of you know about this. We have 10, 10, 10 partners who have said to us, we are with you within that building. I'm talking about supreme nations. We need to step out there on the 13th of May, every one of us, from uh, New England down to New York, and from the south all the way to Texas, all the way to New York. We want to see the kind of crowd that were gathered in Washington, D.C., uh, at the uh, what A uh, AACC, uh, AACC conference. We want to see that crowd gather in New York at the United Nations building in New York on the 13th, on the 13th of May. Every Ambazonian in this country, it is not too much to pay a flight of $200, $300, $500, $100 $100 to get to New York to carry a flyer and stand before that building to tell those, five, those 15 world leaders that we are being decimated. Again, May, May the 13th, May the 13th at the United Nations Plaza in New York. Every Ambazonian, if you care about the massacres, if you care that our brothers and our fathers, our mothers, they live in the bushes. If you care about what is going on in Ambazonia, it is not too much for you to sacrifice to fly into New York or to drive to New York, pull into New York, to stand before that building, United Nations building, to let the international community know we want nothing less than an independent, free, federal republic of Ambazonia. Ladies and gentlemen, when you come there, come with your placards, carry, do your own placards, big ones, 
posters, placard posters. We want all those gory images coming from French Cameroon uh, 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 massacres in Cameroon. Get those images printed and make sure you take them, you take them, you take them to New York. It is very, very important that we do those huge placards. Stand there at the United Nations Plaza so that by the before they walk into that building, they can see the gory, the gory, the gory and the barbaric uh, 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 massacres that French Cameroon has unleashed on us for three years. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to do this. Another thing that I will invite you to do is to, uh, unfortunately, I don't have that information here. I hope that, uh, I hope that Honorable Daniel, the UN Ambassador for Ambazonia, is still watching and can put that phone, those phone numbers on the screen. He promised sending them to me, but he didn't. If he did not, if he doesn't put those numbers on the screen, we will get those numbers on ABC Facebook page. The phone numbers for all those United Nations Security Council members. We want Ambazonians to call from today or from tomorrow. Let's begin to ring those offices non-stop and tell them we are Ambazonians who are pleading with them to save us and give us back our independence which was granted us, which they voted in 1961. We will make sure we get those uh, 15 phone numbers for those 15 uh, UN Security Council member offices in New York. We'll make sure we get those phone numbers and possibly their Twitter handles. We will get them out to you. So that is the assignment uh, coming up uh, on May the 13th at the United Nations. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so glad we tuned in to listen to this broadcast. Uh, at the beginning of the broadcast, I promise I will be coming back possibly on Monday with a very, very in-depth uh, presentation of my discussion with Sisiko last Friday. Last Friday, as I indicated, I had over an hour conversation with Sisiko over the statement he put out there. I will be coming to you next week to do a detailed presentation of that discussion so that we can put what is happening in complete perspective. Now, having said that, ladies and gentlemen, Sisiku himself said, this revolution does not depend on any one person or individual. Listen to me carefully. We are very, very strong here. We are stronger than before. What we are seeing going on right now in this revolution is called a shiftering. There is a shiftering that is going on. Where is Abu Bala today? Who was the leader of this revolution? Uh, where is Fontem Neba? Who was one of the leaders of this revolution? And you can go on and name the rest. No one person, no one person can derail this revolution, I can assure you that I will fight. I will fight with a last, with a last vein in my body. Anyone who wants to bring down this struggle, this revolution, not because of me, but considering all those in the bush, ladies and gentlemen, my own Gino brother is sleeping in the bush for Ambazonia. And if so, and if only one person think that they, they can take away their sacrifice. That will never happen. You watching, listening to me today, almost all of you have been affected one way or the other. You lost, you, you lost your loved ones, your brothers, your sisters, your parents, and you probably lost your homes too. Are we going to sit here to allow one individual, one individual to pull down, destroy the aspirations of 8 million people? Plus those who have died, it is not going to happen. It is not going to happen. So I say this to say to you, be strong. We are strong here at the interim government. 
Dr. Sarko is very, very strong. And everyone, every cabinet member is very, very strong. The cabinet, the new cabinet shall be announced possibly tomorrow, I am hoping. The uh, Restoration Council is still voting it. Uh, they are sat over it at the weekend, but they did not complete uh, the voting. They are still voting a few other uh, members of that cabinet. The moment the Restoration Council puts it out, I will come to you and present it. I am hoping that will be as early as tomorrow. But again, I am saying all this to say to you, do not be perturbed. Do not be worried. God is on our side. Remain strong and keep on praying that the Lord, the Lord, will do a miracle for Ambazonia. Good evening. God bless.